Hey everyone, it's MechLord, and today I am playing my namesake deck. I don't know if uh, if this can be if I can show, but Yugi is like chilling on me right now. One of the few advantages of having like gigantic thighs is my cat can just rest on my leg. So for those of you who don't know, like as if you've never heard of MechLord before. It is a very aggressive archetype that aims to end the game as quickly as possible, thanks in no small part to Mechlord Astro Dragon Triskelion, a big boss monster that usually just one-shots your opponent. Other than that, it can also make some rank 4 slash link machine plays with Mechlord Army Deploy Obligato, though there are many plays that you can make with it. Uh, it can make use of wise Zul in order to negate spells while sitting on a huge defensive body. It can also make use of Synchro Absorption very specifically in order to blank an attack or a destruction effect or just dodge targeted removal. Like, the ceiling of this deck is known, it's not that high, but there's a couple of cool things that you can do with it. The gist of it is, thanks to the scale Mechlord refinements, your basically never breaking, right? So as long as you have a mech lord that you can pitch, say any army, uh, turn one, you can search an assembly, which then becomes an obligato, which then becomes a gear get and et, which then uh, searches a wiseol, and with the assembly, you pop the GGX so you can summon the wiseol. That's pretty good. And then you activate the skill again on your following turn, and you get the Triskelion, and you kill your opponent dead. So that's, that's a solid game plan, right? The deck was like meta for like uh, a couple of months in summer 2022 before the, the um, Reigns were released. Uh, it was pretty good. And then it got nerfed, the scale got, got botched and by the time it got reverted, well, it was it had been power crept. But I think right now it is a contender for actually playable deck for a couple of reasons. First of which is it's just a very aggressive meta, and when your opponent is playing blue eyes and summoning 3000 beaters, uh, one of the best things you can do is summon a 3000 beater that just steals their Dragon Master Knight and punch them in the face for 5000, right? That <laughs> That's a pretty easy way to win games. There's a lot of decks, not all of them are blue eyes, that, that summon or have in the extra decks huge beaters that you can steal with Triskelion. Shiren Ui's Absent Saga, uh, blue eyes have a bunch of options, even Galaxy, as like Photon, Full Armor, Xyz, I forgot what it's called. And all of them pretty good options when you want to play very aggressively, right? A second reason is the quality of back row has just gone uphill since the last time, well, since the time my Lords were meta. Uh, and now you can potentially draw IDP or even Lost Win with your Mechlord Boon that uh, you can search with the skill if you already open Assembly or Obligato. You know, and it's like your deck's ability to compete turn one is only as good as the back row that you draw, but you can get to draw two additional back row, which makes it very interesting. And last but not least, it's a minor thing, but Clayful Genius being released means that uh, you basically have access to a negate on your turn which is like not negligible because you can usually target your own assembly which doesn't really do much uh, on your field. There are scenarios in which it does a lot but uh, sometimes not. And, and this isn't affected by, you know, uh, back row and, and, link, and um, link monsters effects rather. So it's, it's a good card for McLaws specifically if you Cope hard enough, you can even imagine a scenario in which you Obligato with a Clifford Genius on the field, so you can immediately search a Triskelion uh, with the Genius effect, but that's never happening. The deck does have weaknesses, however, else it would be on the tier list and everybody would talk shit about it. Uh, one of which is that you have to place the very lackluster Mechlord armies, which just have a discard folder or summon material uh, from Obligato, and these cards, not really good on their own. Uh, Nucleus Infinity Core I don't think is that great either. I'm considering cutting a couple of copies of this like because like all it does is uh, sometimes you get to in very bad end summon a Weisel from deck. So that's like it's not great. And then you know the ceiling of the deck is like like I said earlier pretty low. It's an on quantity um, and the idea is when you, you are being very aggressive if you fall back or run out of resources, your opponent tends to be more aggressive than you, you just lose the game. There are a lot of games that you will lose 
just because uh, your opponent went even faster than you. That's a shame, but that's the, that's the game, I guess. A uh, quick rundown of the deck, three Triskelions. I don't mind opening multiples of this because you can just pitch one for the scale. You can play two, I guess. Two, two is fine. Three is really my, my own personal preference, but two is completely okay. Three Obligato is absolutely mandatory. Best card in uh, the deck. Nucleus Impedico, not to convince on this one. I think one, two is fine. One wise all uh, that you have like so many ways to search, you know, more than one. One Synchro Absorption, also a very searchable card. Maybe you can play two. Maybe you can play two. I don't know. It's not rotting any hands uh, for very long. Two of each army, uh, more would be a crime. Uh, for my limit one, I am playing Monster Reborn because uh, if we are completely honest, there aren't many limit ones that really benefit this deck. I don't think it's playing enough dark monsters to justify a lot of darkness. So I, the skill prevents you from like playing and traps. So if you if, if this restriction uh, was removed, right, um, you'd be able to play DD Crow, and that, in my opinion, would also justify playing a lot of darkness. But as it stands right now, it's not the case. It's not good. Maybe if you cut one Grenell and put another Weasel. And if Diddy Crow ever becomes a thing in this deck, but it's not. And then just a bunch of back row that you hope to draw uh, with Boon. Up to you, uh, the back row that you choose. If I had Forbidden, um, not Chalice, Droplets, I would play it. Because you can send Assembly with Droplet from Field. And it's a good way to like unclog your Field. Because another weakness of this deck is that you tend to clog your extra <laughs> your back row zone pretty quickly between the Assemblies and Triskelion's effect. So you hope... That you end the game on the turn that you equip the Skellion, or else you're gonna be in trouble. And also, you have to uh, free up a back row zone for Triskelion specifically. Wow, we. And then for the extra, uh, Obligato Machine locks you, but we're still playing Link to Rebo and the Nightmare Suit because sometimes you can use it, and that's pretty decent. Uh, Gear Gigantech searches your entire archetype, uh, Mustafa and uh, Weisel. Uh, you can go Dreadnought Dreadnought into Super Quantal, making Great Magnus. And even sometimes you can you can special summon Iron Wolf and, and say, hey, Triskelion, you're going to attack directly. Cool. And you win the game like this. So that's that's my deck. That's my pet deck. That's my comfort deck. Uh, because I don't think Inferno is playable anymore. Let's see how it does against some of the top tier meta decks out there. This first duel is going to be against Sky Striker, one of the top contenders of today's meta game. I don't know how long the Sky Striker reign will be. Maybe they get up immediately after this KCC. Who knows? Anyway, they're playing 20, 22 cards with the two bonus engage. We opened a pretty decent hand of assembly to search the Obligato and a Mechlaw to pitch to get the boon. And we're going first, so we're gonna be able to dig through our deck. Obligato is being added, and then pitch Grenell at the boon. Summon Obligato, pop Obligato to summon two. Obligato also has a burn effect that is very negligible. I can't think of too many scenarios in which it applies for doing only burns for like 50. I guess if your opponent is playing DDD, this messes up that card of the soul. But no deck is playing card of the soul anymore, so... I don't know. Anyway, uh, we draw another Obligato and Forbidden Lands. Not the greatest, not the greatest. We're going to go into Gear Gigant X in order to search the Weisel, as previously mentioned, uh, which is then going to be able to special itself through its effect by popping our Gear Gigant X with Mechlord Assembly. It is a play that I do very often. It's like a negative one, but also getting a Weisel on the field, especially in the Sky Striker matchup, is pretty good. That is a pretty good card to be playing. Set the Forbidden Chalice, burn for 50, and uh, the turn. My opponent is going to activate area 0. At this stage, I'm like, I'm just going to negate that, because um, maybe it's a bait, maybe they drew the engage. I'm just going to assume that they didn't. Because if they draw the engage, so I can do anything against the gauge anyway. But this is like the, the best starter for the deck that it could have, if they don't have Ray already. They have so many ways of like searching it, uh, so many chances of drawing weight with area 0. And this combos pretty well uh, with, um, what's it called, multi-roll that can send this from field to grave in order to get a race. I don't I don't want them to have the possibility of, like, opening and extending on me. So by negating the activation, I prevent this from floating. 
or from excavating cards. So I'm thinking, you know what, this is the best target to get in this matchup. They're going to follow it up with a Cosmic Cyclone to force my Forbidden Lance. Uh, I'm like, this is fine, you know? Is this wise of the Sitting Duck? But it's, oh, they have the second area zero. Oh, and they have the multi-roll. Oh, that's great. They're going to area zero their set, uh, revealing um, zero Skyscraker cards, which is good for me. But then you get to multi-roll, pitch the area zero, and they're going to summon the uh, Ray from deck anyway, going into Ayate. Ayate is going to attack directly and send a Widow Anchor with her effect. I do remember this game pretty well. I'm not sure why the, um, what's it called? Uh, Sky Striker make a modules then activate there. I'm thinking it's because they activated the multi roll after activating the area zero. They should have done it the the other way so that multi roll could get back the widow anchor that they had just sent with Ayate. So not the greatest Sky Striker player objectively. Um, I get the second assembly. That's neat. You know, I'm just gonna get a, a second obligato. This second obligato is gonna hit the field, it's gonna <laughs> itself, uh, it's gonna summon uh, two things. Wow, two monsters. Realistically, I could have just um, normaled it, went into Nightmare Phoenix, pop their back row, and then the fuck can they do? I just uh, summon Triskelion and I win, right? Except I know that this is Sky Striker, so I, I haven't done the math, but I can't. Does it. Would I would have killed them? Yeah, I would maybe have killed them. If I had just uh, gone into Nightmare Phoenix. So, uh, actually, I misplayed here. You know? Uh, anyway, Obligato is going to get to pop the... Um, well, Assembly is going to get to pop the um, multi-roll anyway. So, I don't know what the last thing is. So, so I'm playing defend ra rather cautiously here. Just attacking directly with Weisel. Uh, thanks to the effect of Heavy Armored Train Iron Wolf. And burning them down to 400 life points. was a mistake. You know? Should have played more, more proactively. But... Um, now I'll know. I'm gonna go into Kagari here. Kagari is going to get back the Widow Anchor. Uh, they can't activate it just yet, so they're gonna they're gonna set it. The set card was a jamming wave. They're kind of targeting their own uh, Widow Anchor, and I'm like, I'm, I'm just I'm just gonna wiggle here because there's the the possibility of them, um, you know, uh, destroying any of my cards afterwards, which. Would not, would not be good news for me, so I'm, I'm gonna say no to that, you know, and then they're linking it up into Shizuku And Shizuku in the end phase is going to get back To get rather than engage not get back. This is the first time they're, they're getting engaged uh, Another misplay they make here just to uh, use Iron Wolf to attack directly with Weisel, you know um, This prevents my other monsters from attacking. Weisel does too But I'm gonna summon the, the, the Triskelion just to be safe and if they remove Vital from my field, like Seven Foot Crackdown, or with the IDP that they're about to activate, I could have still attacked with the uh, Triskelion if I didn't do that. So, like, the second misplay <laughs> slash mislethal of this uh, wonderful, wonderful game. Uh, luckily, my opponent is just as every bit as talented as me. They're gonna get the Afterburner, they're gonna activate Rota, uh, which, you know, that's that's a misplay, putting Rota in your Sky Striker deck. You should put Terraforming instead. Uh, they're gonna get the, the ray, they're gonna activate afterburners, targeting the iron wolf that floats into a monster that I can pitch to get Triskelion. Very smart. They're gonna activate Widow Anchor here. I'm going to be able to tribute the Triskelion uh, to summon uh, the Synchro Absorption to kind of like dodge the, the, the Widow Anchor. That's another misplay that they made. Uh, they're gonna normal ray here, for some reason, and then they're gonna link it to Nightmare Cerberus, and they're gonna pitch the third ray. And try and try and pop my uh, synchro absorption. Except synchro absorption is an effect that says tribute this card uh, to negate the activation of a card that would destroy stuff on the field and then destroy that card. That's like the Stardust Dragon effect, except it doesn't special itself in face. It should. That'd be, that'd be a much better card if it did. Uh, but I'm just going to be able to negate the uh, Nightmare Cerberus, and my opponent is going to concede that because they're an idiot. <laughs> they're an idiot. Um, so that's how you win against Sky Striker. They misplay, and you just win. And you misplay too, but you you misplay less than them, so you win. The second duel is going to be against Shiranui, another one of the greatest decks of this generation. I'm going first again, which is really good, because um, this deck doesn't actually well, this deck does run a couple of, of like disruption uh, for when you get second. Uh, but if I can prevent them from from setting up, uh, that's cool stuff. 
Uh, this time I didn't open assembly, I'm still going to get boon because I did open obligato. Which I'm going to summon, pop itself, summon two armies from deck. I'm trying to get some with different names because I already have a Granel and Graveyard. So, Boon of the Mechlord Emperor is going to draw double Book of Moon, which is pretty neat. I'm just going to go into a Gear against X and use the Gear against X effect to get a Weisel from deck. Which I'm not going to be able to summon this turn. But if my opponent pops up my cards and they do, Shira Nui does have a couple of like cards that can just destroy cards on the field, right? Uh, the Spirit Master, the Sun Saga. I can just get to special the Weisel and that'll, that'll be fine, right? Of course I have two Books of Moon, so I, I feel pretty confident about my ability to play uh, through this duel. They're going to activate the skill, sending Spirit Master to Grave. Hey, I just talked about this card, didn't I? They're going to activate the effect of Spectral Sword in Grave, banishing the Spirit Master to special Aedem Kaiser Dragon. Activate Spirit Master to pop my uh, Gigan at X, which will allow me to special Mechlord Emperor Weisel. They knew I searched this and I did this in hand. And it still made this play. Why? We're gonna watch the animation again, I don't care. It's such a cool animation, really like Weisel. It's my favorite, my favorite Mechlord, definitely, and one of my favorite cards of all time. They're gonna be able to summon Squire there to get a Spectral Sword Shade from deck. This one, they're gonna extend like crazy, so I'm like, no, 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 I'm gonna Book of Moon this little thing. I'm gonna set two, and they're, they're gonna pass, because they can't really do anything against Weisel's giant ass. I'm going to activate Mechlord Refinement here to get an Assembly, which I am then going to activate to get an Obligato. I, I like having Assembly on the field, uh, especially if they have Samsara, so I can, you know, find a, a, a pop, pop, pop the Samsara with the Assembly. I'm going to link up Weisel into a Linker Reaver. Uh, why did I do that? Because it's funny. Then I'm going to Obligato, uh, pop itself, and special two armies from deck. I'm locked into Machines from this point forward, but it's fine, because I can go into one of the greatest machines of them all. Dreadnought Dreadnought was then turned into a huge issue for my opponent. I also have the Triskelion. So I'm just going to go into battle. After summoning Triskelion, they're going to Book of Moon the Triskelion. It's fine. I can still uh, Dreadnought Dreadnought into the Shiranui Squire. And Link Reaver is going to be able to be the Spectral Sword Shade because that's zero defense. Dreadnought Dreadnought is going to rank up into Super Quantal Mech King Great Magnus with three materials, which means that he's able to shuffle two cards uh, once per turn into my opponent's deck. Uh, they're going to activate Ghost Meets Girl, Shiro News 3 to uh, special summon back the Shade. I can't really do anything about it. It would be a good idea to book up in the air. They're just going to get to, like, special 2. Uh, but I'm going to Great Magnus to put the, the, the Spectral Shore back in the deck. It's like, no, don't get in a graveyard. Don't get in a graveyard. They're going to be able to special the Synchro the uh, Shiro Nui Squire Saga here. Can I activate Book of Moon to the psh, get rid of this? Uh, they're going to Doom Kaiser Dragon to try and attack my Linker Reaver. They could have attacked the Triskelion and Riddle Lord have been the same. Tribute the Linker Reaver to reduce their attack to zero. I can't really do anything. Uh, this is battle. Uh, still the Sun Saga. Thank you. Equip the Triskelion. Pa! That's a big lethal. That's a really big lethal. One of the uh, funny things that I could have done in this duel that I didn't realize until after watching this replay. Um, where is it? Because they had a Doom Kaiser Dragon on the field, right? I could have just... Where is it? I could have just summoned, uh... Or rather, used Weisel before linking it up into Link Karibo to steal their Doom Kaiser Dragon. <laughs> um, that that would have been really funny. I should have done that. That, that, was, that was another misplay from me. And last but not least for today, this last duel is going to be against Blue Eyes, one of the premier beatdown decks of uh, this uh, metagame. Probably the one that you're most likely to encounter on Ladder 2. Uh, this one doesn't play Synchro Monsters in the extra, I don't think, anymore, right? Because you don't play the stones, but uh, it is still a, a plenty of monsters for us to steal for, um, you know, our nefarious Triskelion purposes. The open assembly again, I'm just going to Obligato, uh, pop itself a special two armies, uh, Granel and uh, Skill. And then uh, I'm going to activate the boon, hoping to draw good stuff. I drew an Obligato and a Triskelion. So it's like, I understand why a couple of people play only two Triskelions. Realistically, you're never going to be summoning all, all three Triskelions in a single duel. But having, and, and the card is really accessible enough as it, but having the, the option to just pitch it with your skill, having enough names is like, it's not negligible. You could cut that, like, you can play only two Triskelions, uh, so you can avoid the scenario in which I found myself. Very specifically. Also, Lost Wind. Not that great, actually, now I think about it. A lot of people play a, a third IDP. I'll just play a Compulse. I'm just going to replace this with Compulse, actually. Remind me to replace this with a Compulse at the end of the video. 
They're gonna draw a card, they're gonna activate Bingo, Machine Go, I know what this is, where this is going. They're just gonna reveal three Dragon Spirit of White, sound like I have a choice, they're gonna get rid of my IDP by normaling the Dragon Spirit of White. I know they have the blue eyes in hand from the delay because I just noticed the things. They're gonna get Ultimate Fusion here, which is kind of pretty of them, you know, just gonna activate Ultimate Fusion uh, to fuse the blue eyes in hand and the blue eyes on the field into Twin Best Dragon. Twin Plus Dragon, able to attack twice, they have a setback row, I think it's a success or so, I'm not sure anymore. Uh, they're gonna attack into Skill, but Skill is a very funny card that just floats into an Emek Lord Army, including another Skill! So Skill is gonna float into Skill, which is going to float into an Obligato from deck, because it is a Mech Lord Army! Isn't that very funny? Anyway, Assembly, uh, top deck Assembly, is just, I'm just cracked, I'm just good, I don't know what to tell you. I'm gonna normal the Nucleus Infinity Core here. Um, this isn't really a good target for it, it's just, I just wanted to go into Nightmare of Phoenix to bait their back row, but they're just gonna activate it super, super early. Obligato is gonna put itself in order to uh, special 2 from deck, and then, you know, I'm just gonna go into Gear Gigant X in order to search the Synchro Absorption just to, just go over my ass, just, just in case I don't have lethal. I, I, don't, I don't know what could stop me from lethal. Battle Fader is not in the game, you know, uh, if they have a Veiler, it doesn't matter because they have two! Triskelions, and I'm just gonna attack the big dragon. Steal the Dragon Master Knight, thank you very much. That is 5,000 points of lethal damage. Uh, so yeah. When you when you bring a, a gun to a knife fight, I guess. When you bring a Triskelion to a Blue Eyes meta. I don't know. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you all uh, for reminding me to cut this and, and replace it with a, a, a Compulse. Compulse is like really good, gets rid of like um, problematic monsters like the uh, the Jubel uh, monsters, you know, that uh, you can just beat over. We actually have to have another way of, of defeating those. And uh, yeah, really the back row that you, you play in this deck, it's up for, for, to you. You, you, you choose what you want to play. Uh, the, the main deck though, you know, aside from the one Triskelion that you can cut, I think there's not much to improve, and that's kind of the issue with this deck, is that it, it they doesn't really do any new things compared to all the, the, the other decks out there, you know, the Strikers, and the Shiranui's, and the Zambambu's, and the Zombinis, and stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of Mechlord's cards that you can take a look at, and then you read them, and you're like, oh, uh, Aurora Ura Dra? Wow, this is absolute garbage, okay. Fortissimo, uh, maybe if there was a scale, maybe if they just buff refinement to also play Fortissimo from outside your deck, this would be good. Uh, but it's not a Mechlord spell trap, so you can't even search it with a scale. Same with Mech Time Blast, you know, interesting card. Pretty interesting card, easy way to trigger Wise in hand. Um, but it's not a Mechlord card. What is a Mechlord card, however, is the Resolute Mechlord army, which sucks. So you don't actually use that, and then the parts are just... Uh, what's this one? Oh, okay. Uh, all, all uh, they're pretty much all combat focused, and this is <sighs> this isn't good, man. I've seen a, a couple of people like try out builds with um, you know, more emperors. Uh, skill is the worst one of the bunch, so maybe you just play Grenell, you know. Um, don't actually do that because that changes your focus from you know, normal obligato to normal infinity core. Infinity core is not that great, and I don't believe in it. The Issue with Mechlord is like this is like the, the most standard list. Like the core is pretty much unchangeable, and the back row is just I don't think it's the right or a wrong answer. That a Mechlord deck that that got to top 32 of the latest Dwellings Grand Prix. It played only three Triskelion, but the rest was like pretty much the same, except they had Forbidden uh, Droplets. I don't, and uh, they were also playing Monster Reborn. What other limited one cards could I be playing? Uh, Rota. What else? No. One for one to get the nuclear. No, that's not really good. Econ, I guess, is a, a, a valid option. Maybe consider Econ. I don't know. I don't even have Prismatic Econ. God, I've been playing for seven years. Anyway, uh, thank you all for watching this video. This is just a quick little video where I uh, work on all the projects. I'm not going to be like available this weekend at all. So uh, enjoy this, I guess. Let me know what you think of this deck and this metagame in, in general in, in the comments. And we'll see you guys and gals and non-binary pals next time.